Oh, oh there's a few man, things. just caught one. Something just happened. Oh, there's big stuff yeah, in here. Yeah. Just big stuff. These aren't exactly endangered species. And this definitely isn't Yellowstone. But these vacant lots on Chicago's south side are teeming with life. You know, vacant lots really can house an astonishing number of species. And it's kind of incredible because I think most people drive by, you see a kind of an empty plot of land, but there's a lot happening under the surface. Yeah, absolutely. A lot of the neighbors who kind of come out and ask me, you know, what are you up to? Wonder if I'm here to buy the property, to build a house on it. I think that that's our status quo mindset is that these pieces of land in the city should be built with houses. People fail to realize that in the absence of that, there are other really positive things that happen in these lots, and they really do kind of bring nature to the city where maybe it's missing. There are more than 30,000 vacant lots in Chicago, and for the past two years, Elsa Anderson has been studying about 40 of them. She's hoping to answer a few basic questions. What's in the vacant lots? How do people feel about vacant lots? And what can we do to improve the environmental impact of vacant lots? All right, we're going into, into the weeds. Okay. My first thought is, what's growing in these vacant lots? All right, so this is Queen Anne's Lace. This here is burdock. So this is horseweed. And this is a red clover. And then down here at the bottom, it looks like we've got, what is it, a plastic bag and some cans and stuff down there. Yep. So there is you know, some diversity of plants and there's mm -hmm. certainly diversity of insects. Is there any value to this ecology that we've seen? Absolutely. You know, we do see things that are going to be producing food sources for things like butterflies, things like birds. Um, the birds really love to land on the horseweed. Um, I'm not sure what part of it they're foraging on, but I see goldfinches on this all the time. Yeah. Vegetation in general is also beneficial in the fact that it can hold CO2, that it produces oxygen. And uh, there's some evidence that, you know, these rough kind of edges really helps to mitigate the urban heat island effect. Yes. Also in terms of water, when rain falls on a site like oh, this, right, yeah. the water can percolate through the soil, recharge the groundwater, whereas if it falls on concrete, it's going to run off till it finds a storm a sewer yeah. or a drain. Yeah. Now let's come back to that third question that Elsa is hoping to answer. What can we do to improve the environmental impact of vacant lots. 25 miles away in Gary, Indiana, they've come up with one answer. They're transforming vacant lots into urban forests. The trees can suck up water, which is good for stormwater management, but also they can soak up toxics. So for example, you may have lead, you may have different types of runoff, and the roots, typically the root system sucks up some of these toxics. And in a few years, this urban forest is going to pay for itself. This urban forest will be harvested for its biomass. That's basically the wood. And that may become other types of wood products. You know, it could be anything from wood pellets that might be used for heat to furniture. And at the end of the day, just the fact that it looks like you're doing something with land attracts interest. In fact, we were working in one city where because we had planted trees and the trees looked organized and then all of a sudden we got a phone call asking you know when could we move the trees because they wanted to use it for a soccer field. Back in Chicago, Elsa has her own ideas about how to make vacant lots more productive. This is a western sunflower. Um, you can see a lot of it in bloom. On her university's campus, she's experimenting with some very cheap, low maintenance plants. So things like this, this is a purple cone flower. So all these plants were selected because they're pretty hardy. They can grow in contaminated soils, they can grow in really sandy soils. Because we're not going to be out there tending things, yeah. you know, as you would in a typical garden right. situation. You know, to establish something like this probably costs, you know, maybe $200 a lot. And the city spends, you know, upwards of $1.6 million a year mowing their vacant property. But there's one more very important factor Elsa considered when choosing these plants. How it's going to look. Okay. Right? People like spaces that look nice. Yeah. Because ultimately, she wants these vacant lots to be attractive, not just to insects and birds, but to the people who live here. When people invest in an environment, 
not on a huge scale, even yep. just planting a couple of trees or planting a few flowers. There's evidence from other studies that show that this can make people feel happier, reduce violent crime. It can foster a, a sense of place. And I think that that, you know, really is something that here in Chicago we could certainly work towards. Urban nature is made possible in part by the following.